guys. Close this door. Hey, welcome back. It is Monday, and uh, today I'm doing my best impression of a machinist. Let me show you. Okay, check this out. Back here, look, there's no piston in that hole, but there's a piston there and a piston there. Let me show you something. On this piston here, you'll notice that there's valve relief. So there's four valve reliefs in this piston, and it's designed so you can run this piston on either side of the block. As long as you've got front going to the front, then you know these valve reliefs would be on top, vice versa. So they do that. Anyways, remember how I said I had valve relief? Well, I did have valve relief. But the problem is I didn't have radial valve relief. So uh, I'm learning this part of engine building. I've never had one apart. Um, I've never built one from parts like this. Nothing just kind of slams together unless you're pretty much doing like stock rebuild stuff. So you've got to check all these measurements and, and take them and, and recheck them and recheck them. And even when you think something's right, it may not be right, which was my case. So I had valve relief in that I had the depth of the valve was fine. It could go down far enough. But what I was concerned with is every time I would, I would test it out. So I was doing like a, it's called a drop valve check. Basically where you use a checker spring. Here, let me show you. Use a checker spring, a lightweight spring like this. And then you put a uh, dial indicator such as this and you set it up and then you bring the piston up to top dead center and check the valve relief. Well, as I was doing that, depending on where the, where the piston was, if I pulled it down in rotation or against the rotation of where the engine goes, um, you get what's called piston rock because the piston, remember the, the, the pin goes this way. So what you'll get is a little bit of rock where, well, it's not really doing it, but trust me, it happens. <laughs> the piston rocks back and forth on, on the wrist pin. And what I was getting is every once in a while, I would feel that valve dragging the relief of the piston. I'm like, dude, that's not right. So eventually I clayed the piston. I put Play-Doh in it. I stole it from a kid. <laughs> put some Play-Doh in it and I, I took a depression of the valve. And what I found is that I had plenty of depth. I did not have radial valve relief. Let me show you what radial valve relief is. So radial valve relief. So here's the valve. As the valve comes down into the piston, it's not enough to only have clearance this way. You need to have radial, which is, you know, from this edge to the clearance edge. Because what happens when these things are moving six, 7,000 RPM, while well, they're straight now, they're not straight at 7,000 RPM. They, they, uh, they can flutter, they can bend and twist and rotate and stuff. And you can have some contact issues like that. But if you'll notice this piston, I already did it on this one. Look at that. That one is beautiful. It's cut out and there's the factory size. And there's what I did. I'm, guys, I'm impressed it worked so well. It really did. <laughs> so initially, let's see, where's my tool? I had a tool. Let me show you this tool that I made. And I was gonna do it, I, I showed the tool on an earlier video. Here's my tool. So look at that. That's not awesome, right? It's not super clean. <laughs> and I was just gonna drop that down through the, uh, the valve guide and just like send it home, right? Ream it out. Um, I got a better way to do it. Let me show you. Okay, so I have a little milling machine here. Uh, I don't have a big milling machine. I have a small milling machine. This is a Precision Matthews uh, PM25MV. I can't say enough good things. If you're gonna buy a Chinese tool, look at Precision Matthews. They've got great quality control. Um, and they take like extra steps in theirs. A lot of their belt drives are different. It, it doesn't have like the plastic gears in it. Anyways, not sponsored, but hook me up, you know. <laughs> um, the, uh, the mill is great. So here's, here's what I'm setting on, or setting up. This is a, uh, a Criterion, um, oh shit, what's this tool called? I'll think of it when I'm not thinking about it. Anyways, I set it up and I'm cutting a relief in the piston here. And the way I'm doing it is you'll see this, this layout fluid here. This is Dicom. What I did is I, I put the, the valve further away from where I know it's going to depress into the piston. And uh, I, I set the, uh, it's a boring head. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I set the boring head uh, to that. That way, you know, I've got plenty of radial clearance. So I'm now I'm just working that back wall. I got the bottom, the floor. Look at that finish. 
That's sweet. But I got a little bit of chatter on the back wall. I'm going to clean that up. But uh, let me put you guys on the... Uh, let me grab a tripod. Put you on a tripod. And then uh, I'll probably just like do a little time lapse here. But you can see how I'm working the material out of this piston. Let's check it out. Okay, so, whoa, bag it out, bag it out, bag it out. All right, so this is how it looks now. Um, the finish, I'm happy with the finish. A little bit of chatter on the back wall there, but that's cool. I'm gonna clean it up with hand, or by hand, with hand. I will clean it up with hand. I'll clean it up by hand and just knock those edges down. And the reason you want those edges out, those sharp edges, is because the thinner the metal is, the, hot, the more it's prone to creating a hot spot. So what that means is if you have a 900 degrees combustion event it's a lot easier for 900 degrees to basically melt or or make that spot retain heat because on the corner of the material it's a lot there's a lot less density in the material there and it'll retain the heat so if you knock all that down it kind of reduces that anyways that is uh that's that's what i'm doing guys that's the that's the situation here we're going to pull that off the fixture there and that thing moved around a whole bunch. So I'm thinking, uh, I was online and I shared this on a forum, a Small Block Windsor uh, forum on Facebook, page on Facebook, forum. What am I, 100 years old? No, but I'm 40. Um, it used to be forums. People used to use forums. Anyways, <laughs> um, uh, what was I saying? I think I'm going to make a fixture. One fella showed me how he did it, and I really liked it. And it was a good fixture. He had the angle in a plate. And then it, it, I'll make it. I think I'll make it. And that way, the repeatable, and I have way less of a chance of trashing a piston, that fixture moves around a whole bunch. So I'm going to probably do away with that. But I'm, I'm pumped that it's working so well. And then I've got all the clearance I need now. So I've got uh, six more to go. So moving. Moving right along in the right direction. Anyways, guys, thanks so much. Please, as always, like, comment, and subscribe to the videos. Um, your support means the world to me. I've been getting a lot of good feedback again. Super uh, thankful for that. Um, just hit me up in the comments. Tell me what you think about this. Is this stupid? Should I be buying another set of pistons? Uh, should I even mess with this? Is it going to blow up? What do you think? Just hit me up in the comments. Let me know. All right, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you on the next one.